So let's get started. Now, just a quick view of the programs that are administered during the spring cycle of scholarships. Um, we have those listed here uh, with the logos on your screen. If you want to learn more about these scholarship programs, feel free to check out the scholarship section of our website. Um, that's ptk.org backslash scholarships. Now, some of these programs are major specific, like our pharmacy tech programs or for our nursing majors for Hearst, but we do have others like Leaders of Promise that allow for any and all majors to apply. Now, we're going to kick things off here and let Christy talk to you a little bit about the key things to remember. Christy? Can you guys hear me? Okay, perfect. Okay. So just a few key things to remember. Um, so starting off, first and foremost, um, the deadline for the spring scholarship application is going to be Monday, May the 15th um, at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, so just keep Central Standard Time. We're in Jackson, Mississippi. That's kind of what we go by. So if you're in another time zone, just kind of keep, a, you know, keep aware um, of that deadline date and that time. Um, of course, every scholarship does have a purpose. Um, PTK scholarships are not um, automatic. Um, so our scholarships are specifically for our full-time and part-time students, um, international students, um, all different types of majors. Um, so apply at scholarships.ptk.org. They threw that at the bottom. Um, but starting off, you're gonna take a brief eligibility quiz. Um, so things to remember about that eligibility quiz, um, in order to be eligible, you have to have between 12 and 36 credit hours earned by January of 2023. Um, so of course, depending on the program, um, specifically Hearst and Walgreens, um, these hours may differ. Um, and so, of course, Kristen will talk a little bit more about that specifically going into each program. Um, but in addition to those credit hours, you have to be enrolled in an associate degree program for the next academic year in a minimum of six semester credit hours. Um, you also have to have a GPA of a 3.5. Um, so, again, the requirements for Walgreens and Hearst um, may lower. Um, it just kind of depends on what they're looking for at that time. Um, also, you will not be considered for any scholarship until your application is complete. Um, so just some things to keep in mind. Now, if you are here and you're like, oh, I'm transferring to a four-year in the fall, be sure to check out PTK Connect. That is one of your free benefits as a Phi Theta Kappa member. It's, a, it's an amazing platform. Um, but again, it's free to all members. Um, you are able to see the 700 plus universities that have partnered with us to offer you guys opportunities when you further your education at those four-year colleges. Um, so you're able to plan for your transfer, or if you're entering into the workforce, you can actually use the um, job search. You can search by state. You can look at the annual salaries. It's just a lot of different tools and resources um, for you guys to go and move forward with that. So a quick overview of the application. So. Once you get into the internal application, um, obviously you've completed your eligibility quiz. Um, it's gonna look something like that. Um, so obviously you're probably not gonna see anything if you haven't started, it's gonna probably say like 0% complete, but basically it's gonna let you know immediately after you complete that eligibility quiz, what scholarships you're eligible for. You don't have to wait for anybody to respond. Once you enter your answers, it's gonna let you know what you're eligible for just like that. Um, so uh, you kind of see the green check mark for the eligibility quiz. So that means you're good. And then you see the other tabs will actually open up. So you got the applicant info, action, uh, spring programs, PTK, healthcare, waiver. So it just kind of depends on what you're eligible for. Um, that's going to let you know what tabs are going to be open because in each tab, you're going to have to do different things. Uh, we may ask again for another letter of recommendation. We may ask for um, transcripts. We may ask short essay questions. So it kind of just depends, um, but you will always be able to see as a reminder um, in red, um, the deadline dates and the programs that you can actually be eligible for. So if it's, if you're in it now and you're like, oh, 
I don't see Coca-Cola on there. Well, Coca-Cola is currently not open. So the only thing you're going to be able to see up until May the 15th um, is Leaders of Promise, um, any of the Ipsy programs, Hearst, Walgreens, and Workforce Development. Um, but again, you can apply at scholarships.ptk.org and you just log in with your username and your password that you use to log in anywhere else. That's right. And one more thing I'm going to add to it before going to the next slide. Um, there's no formal submit process. Um, sometimes you will see a submit button at the end of the application. Um, you can certainly click on that and just know that if you do, it's going to be a one and done um, pop up that says you completed your application. Um, just letting you know, if you don't click submit, it does not matter. We will automatically collect all completed applications after the date and time um, of the scholarship deadline. So five o'clock central time, <laughs> we will collect all completed applications on May 15th. So just something to let you know, don't be alarmed if you don't find a submit button or you don't click a submit button. We'll gather it all and we'll, we'll, we'll take one little small piece away from you so you don't have to worry about that. We will certainly take care of that for you. Now, here's going to some tips and advice and everything, uh, things you're going to need for this application and for completing this application. One thing I didn't list here is time. Um, we know college students like to wait until the last minute to complete projects. Um, we understand I was a college student once before too, um, and I did procrastinate. So if this is you, you'll likely be asking us, now what? Um, we want you to use your time wisely. There will be no extensions. 5 p.m. Central Time is the deadline, no matter where you live. So I think Christy mentioned this before, put a reminder on your phone, make a sticky note, write it in your calendar. Um, but you will also need data. Know how much time you spent on volunteer activities. Uh, know the dates, what you did, who the leaders were. Maybe you yourself were a leader um, in an activity you participated in. Um, spend a few minutes capturing that information because data really does matter, especially when you're talking about what you did, the who, what, when, where, and why. Um, and if you want a formal outline of, of information like this, um, you might want to consider using our scholarship resume template. We have one available in our scholarship resource library. Um, maybe one of our team members can put that link in the chat. Uh, it's support.ptk.org, and then you click on scholarships. Um, the resume template that is there in that scholarship support library can certainly help you with more than just your scholarship applications. Um, so check it out if you don't already have one. Um, and one other thing you're going to need, um, or actually two other things you're going to need, would be your uploads. Uh, you'll need an unofficial transcript showing your most current grades and GPA, um, and you'll also need a letter of recommendation. Now, be advised, we only accept one letter of recommendation. We get this question a lot. Um, our judges, uh, we tell them that when they are reviewing scholarship applications, to in order to keep all students on an even playing field, we want everyone to upload just one, just one letter. We also let them know that if students do upload more than one letter, they are only advised to read the first one, or if they decide to score a section of zero because a student didn't follow instructions, they are more than um, happy to do that as well. We leave it up to them um, and how they, uh, how they choose to score. But one letter of recommendation, no more, no less. <laughs> now, Speaking of the letter of recommendation, it's not necessary for the recommender to be a member of the faculty or administration of your college, but for the spring, it does need to be someone who can speak to your evidence of leadership. So you, one other thing you might want to provide your chosen recommender with is an explanation of the scholarship award criteria, um, so the scholarships you're applying for. Uh, you can find that listed on our website at ptk.org, um, click on the scholarship section, and you might also want to provide them with a copy of the advice regarding letters of recommendation article that we have in that scholarship support library that I mentioned. So go to that same link, the support.ptk.org link, click on scholarships and you'll find that article. Um, it does help tell the recommenders what it is our judges are looking for when they are reading these letters of recommendation. And also be sure to follow up with a thank you note because gratitude is always a good thing. Now, when telling your story on this application or any scholarship application for that matter, you need to be authentic. Um, and keep in mind that these are independent judges that are reading these scholarship applications and they don't know you. So it's your job to tell your story um, and use the entire application to do so. 
you know, uh, be honest and be genuine in your responses. And don't just say what you think we want to hear, what the judges might want to hear. We want to know about you in your own voice and in your own words. Um, you do need to be specific. Give those details when possible. Uh, I mentioned that earlier, the how many, the how often, how much. Um, this is especially important in the action section that Christy showed you earlier in that, um, that brief uh, screenshot of the tabs in the application. The volunteer activities can be campus or community activities, so that's something to also keep in mind. Now, we do recommend including as many ongoing activities as possible instead of just one-off events. Um, and what I mean by that is serving in a soup kitchen or uh, in a food pantry once a week during the semester looks a lot more impressive to a judge than a student that participates one time and then never goes back again. Um, so if you organize an event, you know, be sure to tell us that. Always look for ways to showcase your leadership, even if you don't have an official title. Um, and there's spaces in the application for you to talk about that. And we absolutely want you to tell the truth in your application, um, but it is just as important to think about how you're going to say something as it is what you actually say in the application. Now we've had students answer some questions before with our application, um, and they would basically just say, I'm trying to better myself with a degree. And while that is a great ambition to have, our judges need a little bit more detail than that. Um, the, the, that student specifically that I was just referencing wrote nine words and the app allows for them to write 250 words in that section. So um, another piece of advice I can give to you is write to the word count that the application allows you to, um, or as close to it as possible. Like now is not the time to be modest. You can humble brag on yourself here. Now that same student, if I remember correctly, they were asked about their career goal as well. And they answered this one simply to get an associate degree. And again, that's a great goal to have, um, but it doesn't tell our judges anything about what the student wanted to do with their associate degree, um, what their passion is or what they're working towards. So the sweet spot is essentially showing judges where your passion and your involvements collide. What you're passionate about should be evident in the choices and what you're writing about. So show those judges how your passion comes to life in the major that you've chosen, in the activities that you participate in, and in your volunteerism. And also make it cohesive. Uh, tell a cohesive story. Make your app connect with your intended major, your career choice, your volunteerism, if at all possible. Um, even your significant endeavor, which does not come into play with the spring app, but a little preview um, for the fall application tab when it opens later this year. It will make your application stronger and make it stand out amongst others. Now, while all of these things might not perfectly align, just think about transfer skills and find a way to relate your experiences to the skills that you're learning now and in the future and your goals and aspirations. Chris, do you want to talk a little bit about this? Absolutely. So you are probably asking yourself um, at this point, how do I position myself to win a scholarship? Um, so to start off or to finish off, you need to finish off strong. Let's just say that. Um, so have what you need at hand to complete the application. So that is that letter of recommendation. You know, you have to give that recommender uh, enough time in advance in order for them to write a well thought out recommendation letter for you. Um, so just keep those things in mind. You know, you got to get a transcript. You know, you have to request those things. Um, just finish strong and make sure you have everything that you need on hand. Um, in addition to that, make sure you tell your story without it being a sob story. Um, so how did you overcome your obstacle is kind of what we want to know. Um, how can you use your obstacle to help others avoid it? Um, so don't just write like you waited until the last minute. Now, if you have waited until the last minute, don't let a poorly written application um, be the reason you're not selected. Um, so just make sure you proofread. Um, get your mom or brother, sister, daddy, somebody to proofread it for you. Um, sometimes two, three, four eyes is better than what you have. So um, just maybe ask a friend, hey, could you look over this? Make sure I don't have any um, errors. Um, also, when you're typing, um, just a little tip I'm going through out there, Grammarly, that may help just to make sure there's no typos because as a scholar, we don't want to see any typos in your scholarship application. That's not a good start. Um, so 
In addition to that, again, like Kristen said, make sure you create a cohesive app um, from start to finish, um, matching your goals with your academic pursuits and the areas where you actually serve. Um, if you have any negatives, turn them into positives. And finally, let your recommendation not only mirror what you say in your application, um, but let it expound um, on what you've written in the application. Um, so just keep those tips and those tricks um, in mind. Like I said, definitely proofread, proofread. It is crazy how we get those last minute applications and we have so many errors and we're like, and you want to be a scholar. Um, so just keep those things in mind and you'll be good to go. Now, here's a look at the spring scholarship cycle timeline. Um, so just a note, we call it the spring cycle because that's when the scholarships are actually administered. Um, so it's not because that's when they're awarded. Um, that is a very big misunderstanding that we kind of have, you know, that we try to get people to actually understand. So we are obviously in the May section. Um, of the timeline. Um, so with our deadline coming up in less than two weeks, applications are going to go into judging in June um, with scholar approval and notifications beginning in July and, of course, continuing through August. Um, scholars will be contacted via email um, that was actually provided in the application. So that is why we ask you guys just to make sure all of that information is updated. Um, so at any point that changes, make sure you hop back in update that or contact us at any point so we can have that information updated. Um, so once those selected scholars um, have provided all needed documentation, um, we will request scholarship checks. And of course, they will be mailed directly to the scholarship recipient, not to the college. Um, so this typically happens around the month of September. Um, so the sooner a scholar turns in the required documents, the sooner we can get your checks and you can have your money in your hand. Um, so one final note, um, our disbursement schedule is not the same as your college's schedule. Um, so don't rely on this scholarship money to arrive in time for you to make tuition payment um, or to buy your book. So just make prior arrangements should you decide to use your scholarship for your tuition, books, room, board, etc. cetera. Um, so you are selected um, if you are selected as a scholarship recipient. So just keep that in mind. Um, so something to put on your radar, not here yet, but it is coming up. Um, so the fall app tab will be available in July. Um, so that deadline date is actually December the 1st. Um, so like we have this May 15th deadline date, uh, we'll go through the cycle I just went over and then July, if you want to log back in and see what you can apply for as far as the fall programs, go for it. Um, so some of these programs are administered during the fall cycle you see on the screen. Um, so All USA, New Century, Heights, um, TEK, Hearst. And if you want a little additional information on these scholarships, you can always go to our scholarships page and read more about it. Um, you can see what the eligibility requirements are. You can see, hey, how many credit hours do I have to be enrolled to be eligible and things like that, if you just kind of want to think ahead. So scholarship resources. So in addition to wonderful webinars with Kristen and I uh, and the rest of the scholarship department, um, we actually have additional resources such as our scholarship support library. Um, so the quickest way to get to that is support.ptk.org. Um, and then of course, click on scholarships. Um, so we have webinars such as this one, we have tips and best practices, there are articles, um, FAQs, scholarship resume templates. Um, so if you're gonna go to a recommender and you like, I just need a letter of recommendation, they're like, well, what do you want me to put? You can also provide that template like Kristen was saying, just so they can kind of have like a, a, a brief overview of like, what do I need to put in this uh, recommendation letter? Um, so that is a great resource. Definitely check it out. Um, if you guys have questions that are not answered in the scholarship support library, you can always reach out to us via email as well. There you go. Yes, just what Christy said. Um, you've gotten some of our best last minute tips and advice that we can offer to you. 
Um, and again, like she said, if you have questions, feel free to contact us. We are real people. Um, we're here to help. And the best way to get a timely response from us, especially this time of year, is to email us. Um, our email address is on your screen. It's scholarships at ptk.org. We also have our phone number listed for you. Um, we're available Monday through Friday, 8.30 a.m. a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time. Um, the good thing about that scholarship support library that we keep harping on um, is it's available 24 seven. So even if we aren't here to answer your questions when you're writing your application at midnight or one in the morning, the scholarship library is there. So feel free to use that. Um, like we mentioned before, we are a small but mighty team. Um, we promise we'll get back to you and your question because at this time of year, all questions of course are important. Um, we do answer all emails in the order in which we get them into our um, queue. So if you don't receive an email from us within five minutes, don't send another one <laughs> asking for help. We promise we're going to get to you. Um, all questions and emails are uh, important this time of year. So um, we also understand they're important and urgent. So um, now that we've gone through this very quick presentation, we wanted to leave some time for um, a question and answer period here. Uh, maybe some questions that are getting asked a lot in our chat from, uh, from you guys. What can we help you with? Heather, have you seen any questions yeah. that you might want to hit on? Okay. Yeah, so first, <laughs> that was too I, quick on that one. <laughs> yeah, no, we've got lots of questions. In fact, I haven't gotten through all of them yet. Uh, my name okay. is Heather Johnson. I'm the Senior Director of Scholarships. And thank you, Kristen and Christy, for that wonderful presentation. Um, let me get started on some of the things that I've seen. Okay. Um, now, everybody, if you do not get your question answered, again, be sure to email us at scholarships.ptk.org, yes. and we will um, point you in the right direction at a later point. But the first thing I wanted to mention is we had lots and lots of questions on whether or not this would be recorded. Um, the answer to that is yes, it is being recorded. Everybody who is attending here and even those who registered but are not attending will get a copy of the link probably sometime later next week. Um, we will also most likely put it in our scholarship support library. So yep. you've got that link um, right there on the screen. So be sure to check that, check back to that next year or next year, <laughs> next week, <laughs> later next week. I'm already moving on. Apparently. <laughs> um, so I, I've seen a lot of questions. So first of all, can you clarify again a little bit more about eligibility regarding you know, people are asking us, like, yes. what should I apply for if I'm graduating, like, say, this spring? What should yep. I apply for if I'm graduating next okay. spring? And yes. what is the money, like, can I use the money for this year or next year or what? So could you talk a little bit about the difference between, again, spring and fall? Sure can. Sure can. Yes, we kind of breeze through that a little bit just because we know we've had some previous webinars, but I am certainly happy to talk about that again. I've answered this question a good bit today um, in our email. If you are eligible for scholarships on the spring cycle, so this application that's due May 15th, um, we are looking for students that are essentially brand new community college students, maybe in their first or second um, semester of college, less than 37 hours or credit hours um, completed at the two-year school by January. So basically how, count up how many credits you have completed so far, not including this spring semester. That is what you're going to put into your eligibility quiz um, to determine if you're eligible for the spring scholarships. To be eligible for the fall scholarships that will open up officially in July when that fall tab is added, uh, fall tab is added, you will have to have more than 36 credit hours completed by the end of this year. So we're looking for the fall scholarships are mainly looking for students that are in their third or almost final semester of community college, getting ready to transfer or getting ready to go into the workforce. Because we do have scholarships for students that are not only transferring to get a bachelor's degree, but we do have scholarships for students that are going into the workforce as well. Um, so I think the other part of that question you'd ask for um, is how they can spend the money. Um, if you are awarded a scholarship, a spring scholarship, we um, the, the donors are looking for you to, to utilize that scholarship while you're at the community college. So if you need to um, pay for books, if you need to put gas in your car, if you need to put food on the table, you can use it however you need to in order to fund your education or to get through um, your associate degree. So that's one reason when Christy mentioned that we send the scholarship checks directly to you guys, we do. That is one thing that we pride ourselves on. Um, Dr. Tensher Ladner is very adamant she wants to keep it that way. Um, if we send the scholarship money to you guys, you can use it however you need to to fund your education instead of sending it to your college where they can pick how to fund your education. Um, so certainly that's what we are looking for with these spring scholarships 
scholarships. Um, the fall scholarships, again, are primarily reserved for those students getting ready to transfer or go, in, go into the workforce. Um, that money is primarily used when you do transfer to the four-year school or you go into the workforce and need to purchase scrubs as a nurse or whatever the case may be, um, tools of your trade, essentially, for those workforce scholarships. Um, Heather, did I miss anything there? <laughs> no, I think that's good. Okay. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I definitely have um, some more questions if you all are ready. Okay. Um, so I'm seeing some questions about um, letters of recommendation, things like, you know, again, how many letters do I get? How many, um, or like, who should I ask? Um, mm -hmm. If I have somebody who wrote a letter previously, can I do that? You know, this might be an opportunity for us okay. to just kind of briefly chat about like what we look for in a letter of recommendation, as well as um, how you can use the scholarship resume for that as well. Maybe? Absolutely. Um, I will probably let you touch on that in, in a minute, Heather, um, just mainly using you because I know you've judged for other scholarship programs in the past. I'm going to throw this out there. I mentioned it briefly. We use an independent panel of judges for our scholarship application. Um, the team, the people you're looking at here, we do not judge scholarships. Um, we help you uh, with questions you might have, but we don't actually judge them. Um, so Heather has had experience judging for other organizations, so I might utilize her in just a moment to help answer these questions, but sure. as far as letters of recommendation goes, from what we've heard from our judges, um, they're looking for students to ut utilize someone that knows them, um, not a family member, not a friend, but someone that can be, it can be a faculty member at the college, it can be a professor, it can be the college president, um, it can be someone that maybe your boss or someone that was in a leadership role with an organization you volunteered for. Um, we've had pastors at church um, submit letters of recommendation. It's essentially someone that can speak to your character and your leadership abilities um, inside and outside the classroom. Um, think, of, think of who that might be in your life. It's not always gonna be the same person for everyone. So think about your life, um, where you're at in your journey, uh, how much time you have to volunteer. Just think about who can be that person for you. Um, don't choose someone that doesn't know you. I know that sounds kind of silly to say, but um, you want someone that can write a good and a positive letter of recommendation. If they're going to be recommending you for a scholarship, you want them to know about you. Um, so think about that. Um, Heather, do you have any advice being that, that since you've judged for other scholarship providers in the um, past? Yeah, sure. I'd be happy to. So, um, so a lot of times the letter of recommendation judges simply use it as another means to provide additional evidence of what you've provided in your letter of recommend or in your application. And so when I say that, that means that there are some times that a student will write something and a judge might be like, oh, that's a little, that seems a little far-fetched, but if they read it in the letter, then it confirms right. that, you know, oh, wow, they really did something that's pretty great and really hard to do. Um, at the same time, it can also be a way for a person to seem like they're saying a lot of things in the in the letters like oh no 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 they didn't do any of that so it's 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 just another way to provide evidence of things like leadership academics you know they can talk a little bit about your volunteerism um a different variety of things like that so what this is where um again the scholarship resume would come into play be sure you're providing your rec letter of person who's writing your letter of recommendation with um information about a the purpose of the scholarship so like if we're asking for a leadership letter you don't want to write a letter about academics like they were great in class that doesn't say anything to leadership right. um and then and then also by giving them opportunities to say hey here are things that i'm involved with you know then they can say oh this person is a leader for example they have done this this and this in their letter of recommendation and then that looks to us like oh they know this person well, they know that they're active and involved in campus, they're engaged and they're they're definitely a leader on campus. So, so um, I guess my advice with that would just be to be careful about who you ask, make sure you know they know you well. Um, it can be from a variety of sources, as Kristen said. Um, you know, you want somebody who who potentially knows you better than so if they say an academic one, but the best person for you is the person who's supervised you, then that I would suggest you use the person who knows you better. Absolutely. Yes. Um, that That's one thing. We do have that question come in a lot, and Christy can attest to this too. Um, when students email in to ask, they might have two or three letters of recommendation provided from people they know, from recommenders, and they ask us our opinion on which one to use. We're mm -hmm. always going to tell them to look at the purpose of the scholarship, 
like look at who knows you best and what they've spoken to. So if the, like Heather said, if the, um, if the scholarship is more so looking for your, um, or talking about leadership potential, you want someone that wrote about your leadership potential. You want to, maybe your boss um, who wrote you a glowing recommendation letter about um, your leadership abilities um, on the job, et cetera. You would choose that one over the teacher that's only seen you like twice a week and knows you're a good student in class. And like th that's about it. So I would just say exactly kind of reiterate, reiterating what Heather said um, and choosing your recommender. So um, I do also recommend that you always ask for a copy of your letter. Oh, and, yeah. th and that way, um, that way you can you can uh, potentially keep it and use it for another purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and if you get it and you don't like what they've written or you feel like yeah. you know, they didn't put enough time into it, they didn't like answer happen? the questions, you have an opportunity to ask somebody else. So that's why it's yeah. important that you have um, you give your recommenders a wide time frame. Yeah, to, courtesy of time. Request. Yeah, like, give them like two that. weeks, you know, say yeah. I need a letter. I'm going to give you two weeks to do it and then get it. And if you don't like it, you could ask somebody else. So give yourself plenty absolutely. of time through that process and then be sure to follow it up with the thank you. Yes, absolutely. And know that these deadlines will sneak up on you, especially at the end of the year. Um, May 15th will be here before you know it. And we know that too. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, so yes. Uh, are there any other questions that you've seen a lot that maybe we can, we can hit on? Yeah. You want to talk a little bit about like what kinds of students might be eligible? I've seen a lot of questions about, um, I guess, um, dual enrolled students, um, oh, yeah. international students, students from Canada, et cetera. Absolutely. Um, we have scholarships for pretty much anyone, um, any citizenship status, age, uh, major, et cetera. Um, while they are, there are some scholarship programs that do have, um, they are major specific. So Ipsley, they're looking for um, EMTs, fire science, criminal justice majors, um, public safety programs. Uh, TEK is looking more for productions management, things like that. Um, of course, we have Walgreens and Hearst that are more so in the medical field, the healthcare field with nursing and uh, pharmacy tech. We have Leaders of Promise that is not major specific. Um, scholar or students of any major, even if they don't know their major, they're just, um, they're undecided, can apply for the scholarship. Um, and there are 200 of those too. <laughs> so that's something that um, to also keep in mind. But students of any citizenship status can apply. Now, some donors do have um, certain requirements, but it, it is specific to the donor. Um, and, I, and I mean that as they're looking for students that are in their community college um, and early in their career versus students that are finishing up at the community college with plans to transfer. Depending on where you are in that timeline will also depend on which scholarships you're eligible for, spring or fall. Um, you mentioned students in Canada specifically or mm -hmm. international students. They can apply for our scholarships too. Um, a couple might have citizenship requirements, most of which do not. Um, so we even have scholarships for undocumented students and DACA students as well. Um, I didn't touch on this one in this um, spe uh, presentation specifically, but I do want to mention it now. Um, the Obendorf Lifeline to Completion Scholarship is one that's also administered. It is not a part of the PTK scholarship application. It has its own application. And the reason why is the majority of our scholarships are merit-based, meaning, you know, you do have to put some effort into it when you're applying. Um, and it goes, it looks at GPA, looks at a lot of things. Um, the Open Door application is a need-based scholarship and it's an emergency need-based scholarship. And it's on a separate, you still go to the same website, scholarships.ptk.org to apply, um, but it is a separate application. So if you or someone, or you know someone that is still in community college, planning to be there through December of this academic year, um, and you or someone you know has experienced um, some kind of financial burden in the last six months, whether that be a natural disaster, um, you wrecked your car, you lost your job, your spouse lost their job, um, whatever it might be that could potentially be a barrier from you for you uh, to finish your associate degree, keep in mind this Obendorf application. Um, we do select scholars monthly. Uh, for this emergency uh, funding, we had a we had an email about that today, asking actually how um, when we're going to be selecting the new uh, the new winner. So we'll be doing that here very soon. Um, so keep that in mind. If you were a victim of a, nat a natural disaster, we had some horrible tornadoes here um, last month in Mississippi uh, that affected a lot of people that maybe lost their homes or or whatever it might be, uh, wildfires out west, we hurricane season's coming up, 
um, anything that could be, you know, just something that is a barrier keeping you from potentially finishing your degree. Um, I didn't want to muddy the waters by putting it in this presentation, but I did want to mention it should you or anyone you know find yourself in that situation. Um, so uh, that is something else. I um, was trying to think dual enrolled. You also mentioned that we are we have scholarships for dual enrolled students. We are looking at if you are enrolled in associate level coursework, whether you, that is you attend college full time or you are partly enrolled in high school, partly enrolled in college. It, we're looking at college level coursework. So if you have less than 37 credits completed right now, go ahead and apply for the scholarship. Um, I did not put the link to the website on this page, I just noticed, but scholarships.ptk.org is the direct link to our application. You can get to it by going to our website and clicking on the apply now button as well. It's in several spots, um, but yes, we have, we have scholarships. I think Christy mentioned this for all students, any age, any major dual enrolled, um, non-traditional, uh, you name it, we pretty much have a scholarship for you if you're in your associate program right now. Um, I, I did wanna ask Christy if she wouldn't mind, she is our um, college relations and scholarship support specialist. So she knows a little bit about scholarships and a little bit about college relations. She actually knows a lot about both. Um, Christy, would you mind talking a little bit um, about PTK Connect and what the difference is between our scholarships are and the ones that students can find and connect? Because I know there, there are potentially students on here that will be graduating either in the coming weeks or before the end of the year. Um, ask some of them to go ahead and attend this webinar just in case, because I think I thought they could get some benefits out of it. But would you mention briefly the differences between our scholarships and the ones that are found in Connect? For sure. So again, any PTK, um, internal scholarships which is why you guys are probably here in this webinar again they are funded and administered by us, <laughs> us our team right here <laughs> for lack of um, a better so yeah. again they're funded and administered by us again we are specifically looking for um, our ptk members who are trying to obtain their associate's degree program um, but we already kind of spoke about that so i'm gonna go into what we call external scholarships. Um, so that's what we call our transfer opportunities um, that are actually listed in the free platform that you have, which is PTK Connect. Um, so if you go into PTK Connect, you probably get in the platform and you really don't know what you're looking at. But basically, it's not a, oh, I need to go in and complete this application. It's not that. It is literally just the resources literally in front of you, all the resources. So you can search by college. You can search by scholarship. Um, so basically, we have, again, over 700 four-year colleges around the U.S. that have partnered with us to say, hey, I want to set money aside for your PTK member if they do decide to transfer to my college. But we give you the platform because you have to go in and do your research. Some colleges give a set amount of money, like $500 per semester. Some colleges are doing full tuition. Some colleges are giving full rides. But we give you that platform to go in and do your research. You may be looking for a college in a specific state. So you can look by state. You may be looking at or you may want to look at colleges that have a specific major. You can look by majors. It just kind of depends on what you're looking for, right. what catches your eye. You can favorite your little profile. If they have a really good scholarship, um, you can compare two different colleges or multiple colleges at a time if you want to see what's the best fit for you. Um, but again, with those external scholarships, we don't fund or administer any of those. That money is coming directly from the four year because that's what they have decided to set aside. So again, we give you the information, the resources, the um, admissions contact, because not everybody at that four year college is gonna know about Phi Theta Kappa or the right. Phi Theta Kappa transfer scholarship. So that contact person that's going to be in connect, you're going to reach out and say, hey, I'm a Phi Theta Kappa member. I see that you have a scholarship listed um, with Phi Theta Kappa. What do I have to do in order to obtain that those funds? Um, sometimes it's first come, first serve. Um, so 
start early. <laughs> right. I mean, there's no too early. As early as you want to start, reach out. Right. Um, make that recruiter remember your name. Make yourself right. known. Hey, I'm at this community college, but I want to come here. Make yourself known. Set up a, a campus visit, things like that. That is what's going to get your name out there um, to boost your chances and your opportunities of being um, one of the first people to get that money basically um but again it, it sometimes it's first come first serve it's a lot of different opportunities and resources out there you just have to go out and get it it's not just going to fall in your hand um that's right was one other thing I wanted to say that I felt like I was missing um but yeah um so I talk with a lot of students sometimes they're like dead set on one college my question is always if there's a college that's not listed in Connect, but you're dead set on it, would you consider going somewhere else that would offer you literally a full ride just for being a Phi Theta Kappa member? So it's something to just consider and think about, but it is a really, really great resource. Um, if you guys have issues navigating, you can always reach out um, to me. I'll drop my email. Ooh. I'll drop my email in the chat. You yep. can reach and it's out on the screen and too, like, scholarships right. at ptk.org. So yeah, I'd be absolutely. more than happy to help y'all out for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Christy. And one other thing I'll add to that too, just to kind of help you guys understand the differences um, internally and externally. We also call external scholarships transfer scholarships and we also refer to them as institutional scholarships so they're all synonymous they mean the same thing one thing to keep in mind when i said that we um give scholarship money checks um directly to you guys to use um colleges and in these institutional transfer scholarships the money is put into your broussard's account um that's one difference so i'm going to send you a check if you win a scholarship colleges transfer scholarships will go into your account at the four-year school um, one way to keep that uh, keep that separate. Um, and then we also don't have any scholarships that are called the Phi Theta Kappa scholarship. So if you do have a question about that, it's not our money. It's going to be a four-year school's money. Um, that's one thing we've always noticed too. They like to borrow, understandably, they borrow the name Phi Theta Kappa when describing their transfer scholarships to let people know this is specific for Phi Theta Kappa members. Um, it's not for everybody. We set money aside for the brightest students that are members of PTK, and that's what the scholarship is for. Um, so I just thank you so much, Christy, for that, that explanation. We did want to briefly touch on it during the main webinar, but I wanted to bring it up one more time because I know there are students on here that um, even if they're transferring in 2024, Christy said it's never too early to start looking because honestly, a lot of these schools have early deadlines or they have priority deadlines. You want to put your name in the hat as soon as possible, especially if you know where you're going to go. But even if you don't know where you're going to go um, when you transfer or if you transfer, now's the time to do the research. Um, compare these schools to each other. See who's going to give you the most money, um, especially if you uh, have the ability to uh, to be flexible about where you attend. Um, if you have a few schools right. that are competitors like Mississippi State and Ole Miss here in the state of Mississippi, um, we're huge rivals in sports and we're also huge rivals when it comes to scholarship opportunities. So uh, sometimes those students will uh, use that to their advantage and get those transfer recruiters to see who's going to offer more money for them to go to school. So keep that in mind as well. Heather, do you have any other questions that you're seeing a lot of we can help answer? Yeah, so I see one, I see. Um, so I do want to remind people that if you are going to be at the community college again next year, you can apply now for spring. Yeah. So complete that and get it in for by May 15th. If you are awarded, you would use that next year. Um, then in fall, the fall application opens up in like July-ish mm -hmm. yeah. um, and is due on December 1st. Right. So if you did or didn't win um, a PTK spring scholarship, you can still apply for fall as long as you are planning to transfer in December of 20, or sorry, fall of 2024. So if you, again, if you're going to be at the community college one more year, um, you have the opportunity to apply for both spring now, yeah. and then you'll come back next semester in the fall and apply for the fall one. So I want to share with that. Perfect. Um, a couple other things I'm seeing here and feel free if anybody has, we're, we're almost about ready to wrap it up. So if you have yeah. not had an, uh, your question answered, um, I'm happy to help that. A few last things that I do see that um, people are asking is, can you win a scholarship twice? 
you can't win the same scholarship same twice. So you couldn't win our Leaders of Promise scholarship two years in a row, but you could win, say, Leaders of Promise one year. And then if you apply in fall, you could win New Century Scholars the next right. year. So you could win different scholarships, but you can't win right. the same scholarship twice. Yep. Um, by And then some questions about things like, um, when I mentioned dual enrolled, I'm also seeing some other students who are asking about like non-traditional, et cetera. I should clarify that our scholarships typically do not have any restrictions or any preference given regarding things like um, gender, race, age, right. um, enrollment right. status for like dual right. enrolled, part-time, full-time, et cetera. Right. Some of our programs do have criteria that you either need to be full-time or you might need to be part-time. Um, mm -hmm. But in reality, we know that community colleges have all sorts of students. Yeah. <laughs> So as a result, we try to make sure that our scholarships are open to as many yeah. students that reflect the students who attend community colleges. Absolutely. So I just wanted to share that, that the only things typically that may clarify or that may um, prevent you are certain scholarships that are major specific. I think yeah. of those ones as being like, um, like our Walgreens pharmacy tech, like you're not going to be eligible for that one unless you're pharmacy tech. So usually right. program is the only thing that would be a special like characteristic that would prevent you from applying for one of our scholarships. That's right. So yeah. um, let's see. So I would just, I, I guess I don't see, we're getting, we will, yes, we will send a recording. Um, I don't know about the transcript. I'm unsure if a transcript with the chat, but you should be able to listen to everything. Yeah, and you then can, if, you'll be able to listen to it. And we're also going to ask for this recording to be put into our scholarship resource library too. Yes. So you can access it between now and May 15th. We'll try and to if, get that up as soon as possible. If not tomorrow, early next week. Yes. And if you have not had your question answered, feel free to answer to email it at scholarships at ptk.org. Yeah. Okay, I'm seeing a couple more questions come in here. I think people are trying to get get some answers Last before minute. we leave. Um, That's understandable. We've got about yeah. 10 minutes though. Um, and we, and just to kind of let you guys know, we do try to hit a lot of the questions we get multiple times. If you have very specific questions, like a special circumstance, it's best to email us directly at scholarships at ptk.org so we can spend more time answering your question. We do try to hit on the most most popular questions in these webinars just because there are, I think we had upwards of 170 of you guys in here earlier mm -hmm. we want to hit those as, as, as much as possible in this time frame so I was trying to think yeah. there's anything else that um that I can think of that maybe we forgot to mention um, um maybe some let's see did we talk at all about PTK Connect? Like if they're going to graduate this June, we did talk a little bit about PTK yeah. Connect. Yeah. yeah I asked Christy to really hit on that a little bit more too um it, it's it's definitely something it's a free resource you can use as a member and it's a valuable resource with almost 800 different four-year schools that we have partnerships with now christy and um her team uh, with college relations they work tirelessly to get more colleges to jump on board and offer scholarships specifically to you guys um members of phi theta kappa they work on that every single day um wow so the scholarships just reiterating this that we talked about today and that are going to be administered this fall those are for you to apply for while you're at the community college and you have to be enrolled in at least six hours of coursework um oh here's that this is what i wanted to say i had a question right before this webinar started someone was asking if credits and hours mean the same thing because we've used them interchangeably yeah. yes yeah. <laughs> they Typically do they do yeah. yeah yeah so if i say 36 credits or 36 credit hours or even 36 hours they all mean the same thing schools refer to them differently um i've heard units mentioned before too mm -hmm. essentially six semester hours of coursework equates to about two classes if that helps you um it's all going to be on your transcript um it will be broken down on a transcript um, I didn't go into much detail about that when I mentioned that as an upload. We do need a copy of an unofficial transcript when you apply for our scholarships. We may reach out to you over the summer if you apply for these um, and ask for an updated one. Um, we may or may not. It depends on what our judges ask for. Sometimes we get into judging and we have our judges ask for a more legible copy of a transcript or a more legible copy of a letter of recommendation. So um, don't be surprised if you hear from one of us over the summer months. Um, it could be a good thing <laughs> if we're reaching out to you, but sometimes we have our judges ask some uh, follow-up questions. So um, that's another reason when Christy mentioned, we want you to have the most updated um, information in your application as possible. We're going to be reaching out to students if they win a scholarship or if we have any questions from our team or from our judging panel 
that email address you put in your app is very important. Make sure you check it, especially when it goes back to that timeline when we're getting out of judging in June, going into July and August and making those announcements. Make sure you're keeping an eye on your email, your junk and spam folders. You don't want to miss it. I mean, we're not going to let you fall through the cracks. We will text you. We will email you. We will call you. We'll email your advisor if we have to, if you want a scholarship. We're not going to let you just fall through the cracks, but um, we do need to uh, hear from you guys in a timely manner when we do get those awards announced. Again, that will be late July, early August, um, probably not much before then. We do have very specific timelines that we have to adhere to, uh, but We'll get those announced as soon as we can. We love getting those awards announced in, uh, in, in your hands, especially before the fall semester starts. All right, so I think, I think we've answered most all of the questions that I've seen go through. Okay. Um, I think the one thing that I would last share is that um, I do know that we had a lot of questions that came across that were specific about eligibility and all those kinds of things. If I were to get, if I were to leave with one piece of advice, it would be to go to the scholarships.ptk.org website, yeah. um, click, you know, the application, go in there and start with the eligibility quiz. Um, right. A lot of the questions that are being asked pr can probably be answered by yeah. actually getting in the application and reading the instructions and those kinds of things. That, that that's definitely so, it. Um, I, that we get that question a lot, um, and it's a generic hey, what scholarships am I eligible for? And my answer honestly is I have no idea. Every student is different. Every situation is different. So my advice to you is to go to scholarships.ptk.org, click begin now, take that 11 question quiz. It's not difficult. Um, mm -hmm. if, if there are questions like that you might have because you're duly enrolled and you want to know how to answer something that I can understand that. Um, we can certainly clarify anything that might be um, causing some confusion for you within the quiz, but it's 11 questions. As soon as you hit get eligible sections, it will either open the application with all those tabs that Christy shows you, or it will give you a message that says you're not eligible at this time. And if you have questions as to why you're not eligible, send us an email. We're happy to pull it up. But we can't tell you what you're eligible for until you at least answer those basic questions. Mm -hmm. um, 3.5 GPA is almost always standard. Um, six hours of coursework less than 37 hours yep. for the spring. Same um, though total. with like letters of recommendation, it'll say directly in there like what the letter is yep. looking for. Um, if there's yep. any essays, the essays will specifically show like how many words you need to enter. So it's like yeah. the, the letter or the application will actually give you all of the instructions it's that you very, need to know. Yeah, it's very interactive too. And it a lot of those questions have tool tips, what we call them, where you can hover mm -hmm. over a little question mark or exclamation point and it gives you more information. So the yes, question, advice. it might be a basic discussion question, but if you want to, if we thought that we could give you a little bit more of a prompt to consider when answering, we put it in a tool tip. So hover your mouse um, over that if you can, um, or click on it if you're on your mobile device. Um, it will give you sometimes additional prompts to consider when answering these questions. So um, sometimes that's, that is kind of a tip I didn't think to tell you guys earlier. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a behind the scenes tip where it might help you um, go a little further in the judging process because they're going to see that you expounded even more on the question that not every student's going to do. So there's, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's an extra tip for you. <laughs> yeah. So with that, we'll wrap it up. Um, right. Let's can can one of you drop in? Let's drop in the oh we have it there. Scholarships at ptk.org. Okay. If your question was not answered, or as you begin or work on completing the application, do May fifteenth. Please 5 feel free. Yep, five p.m. Please feel free to send us an email. We can have we can help you with um, uh, any of the questions that you might have as you're going through that process. Absolutely. So, yeah. With that being said, Kristen and Christy, thank you so much. And everyone, thank you for joining us. Thanks, guys. We hope to see you in the judging process. <laughs> Bye.